This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Use code PLAYTOWIN5 at the affiliate link down below to help support the show. Welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in C-E-D-H. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. And this week, we're going to do something that we've never done before, which is put a deck together ourselves. Yeah, it was going to be a live brew session, basically. We're going to start from zero. We're going to choose a commander. We're going to go up from there. So we're just going to jump right into things as we always do. I was thinking we should build a deck around Francisco Falmarauder. Francisco, that's fun to say. It is very fun to say. I love that we're now getting like for lack of a better word, real names sure, on yeah. Commanders. <laughs> yeah, like more real, definitely. Like, yeah, we're that much closer to a Dylan and Cameron actually appearing in the Magic Universe. One of these days. <laughs> one of these days, yeah. Um, so let me pull up Francisco. Yeah, Francisco was one that we didn't talk about in our set review because in our set reviews, we only talk about the main set, and I believe Francisco is in the only well, the Commander product. that's not product. true. We did talk about like some Jurassic Park uh, stuff too. Yeah, so we did. Really, it's not a good excuse then. <laughs> no, it's really not. Really, I think Francisco, like we knew it existed. We knew it had partner, but I don't really think that the capacity, its actual capacity, really impacted us when we had first gone through the list. And uh, this is why we now do like recaps on our past set reviews is so that we can go back and like talk about stuff that we missed. Yeah, I didn't see the combo potential in Francisco. Definitely. I was too busy thinking about like, how do you use that explorability when really there were just a few combos that I had not noticed. Uh, and Francisco, it works pretty well with a couple of them. So let's read Francisco so that we right know idea. what yeah. this explore thing is and what we're talking about here. So Francisco Foul Marauder, which by the way, is a pun because it's a bird pirate it's a legendary creature bird pirate foul bird get it uh, yep. yeah great <laughs> nice it's a bob burgers card uh one in a black for a zero one flyer it can't block and whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to a player francisco explores and it has partner that's the really exciting part is that we now can pair this up with the same things that Tevish and Armix are getting paired up with. This was kind of a strange one because I think this was, I mean, this, this was the only creature that had partner out of all of this whole set. So it felt kind of out of nowhere a little bit. They've only done this once before, I believe, where they put like a one of partner and that was with Yoshimaru, the I dog. I believe that's correct. Right. So that's pretty cool. Um, this one combos. How, how are we structuring this? Where are we starting with? Should we start with like the reason why we're playing it? Like, should we talk about its combo potential with Walking Blister right now? Well, I think we should because obviously like tevish is a very well established right. like mono black partner why this why this parrot why is this good the first thing is that it's three mana cheaper so that's going to open up a lot of doors for us already but it's going to make cards like uh fierce guardianship potentially and deadly rollick we'll stay in mono black for right now yeah it's going to make those cards much easier to play it's so interesting that just the commander being two mana is like a good quality like right? it's, it's yeah. on the post it's like two mana is just cheap enough that you can get it out on turn one with the chrome mox or mox diamond or something like that and you can turn on some spells quickly so it just being two mana is good so there actually is a two card combo that works with francisco so that you can deal infinite damage to the table and you previously mentioned walking ballista if you pair that up with agatha's soul cauldron you can do this so if you have a way to get walking ballista into the graveyard you can exile it with agatha's soul cauldron and put a plus one plus one counter on francisco the main problem with francisco is that francisco's power is zero goose egg so it needs something else to help power it up so that it can explore when it deals damage and that's what Agatha Soul Cauldron does. It gives it the plus one, plus one counter. There you go. So Agatha Soul Cauldron also gives creatures with plus one, plus one counters abilities of things exiled to it. And Walking Ballista has that cool little text that says you can remove a plus one, plus one counter to deal a damage to something. Well, when Francisco has the plus one, plus one counter removed to deal a damage, then it gets to explore. So as long as you have a non-land on the top of your library, you can consistently put another plus one, plus one counter on Francisco. Francisco doesn't say combat damage. No, it, it just, just deals damage. damage to a player. Yes. Uh, God, why are pirates worded like this consistently? I, I feel know. like pirates are so <laughs> good. They exclusively make pirates good now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so again, as long as you don't have a land on top of your library, you can just keep the non-land on top and just consistently loop through damage and plus one, plus one counters to finish the table. And this is actually especially handy when you consider final parting, 
turns this all into a one card win condition because it just puts walking ballista in your graveyard agatha soul cauldron in your hand and what i like about this more too is that normally for me agatha soul cauldron combos are really hard to set up you have to get something into the graveyard and i don't think there's really enough entomb effects yeah there's just unfortunately we don't entomb is great we have a couple others that are close to entomb that cost a couple more mana but there's just not enough for this reanimator type strategy normally to be good you want like a, a several you want a lot yeah. of options and we just don't have that but walking ballista being a thing you can cast for zero mana just to put into your graveyard makes this so much easier to set up yeah it definitely makes it a huge difference you don't have to worry about discarding it you don't have to worry about doing some other thing to get it to the graveyard just play it and it'll go right into the graveyard and this all being in mono black means that we can choose pretty much any partner that we want to go along with francisco and we can just slide this into an already established really good shell yeah there's a ton of black tutors so black is obviously a great spot to be yeah. in when we have like a one card win con and a very efficient two card win con just what what other colors do we add so let's start there then what, what other colors are we adding to this my gut right away blue seems nice because there are some artifact tutors in blue and i feel like i want some extra ways to get agatha totally agreed I right think okay. if we're going this to be a partner process. deck i would want blue anyway blue is just a great color we don't have to explain why blue is good for other reasons as well um white has enlightened tutor and silence effects so of course that's nice yes green what does green really offer this strategy not much we don't want ramp right no, like we're not looking really for tons ramp. of mana so i don't know if green green is really good for creature tutors which finding the walking blue stit into play i guess that is half of the combo that could be helpful i guess that's true yeah so like for just a finale of devastation for zero yeah is another in tomb i guess okay that's something um and then red red dockside is dockside helpful here it Dockside's just gives you helpful. access to if we're already playing blue then we get to play a grixis deck okay which means that we just get to be in like one of the best strategies in the format just with a two mana commander instead of like tevish francisco crom is probably the the first reaction i've seen this deck already yes. i haven't looked at a deck list but i've watched uh content where this deck is played it seems like it could be something we could go that direction. We could go Grixis. Grixis is just good. You know, like you said, it just has a bunch of good stuff. The other two things that I think of, even though green doesn't give you a ton, I think Thrasios is just like another better thing to have in the command zone instead of something that's just like not just like only giving you colors like sure. a vile smasher tends to be like yeah that's a bad example here but at least thrasios has some sort of advantage engine Chrom has that too which is another plus towards there that's i can see true. that timna is always a consideration for me but i don't know if we want to be an orsov i'd rather play a third color at yeah. all times if i have the option to and playing ishai i don't love no yeah, i don't not love not having two no card advantage engines at the command zone because we got to say explore is not card advantage no explore no, is it like isn't. 25 percent card advantage no it's, it's less than a scry i would say um maybe better than a scry maybe better than a scry. it's better than a scry because sometimes it puts a land in your hand scry. yeah it's better than a scry i self-correct yeah. i'm wrong um but it's not much better than a scry no, if a scry is 50 percent of a card i, guess I would is say like an explore is 75 percent of a card yeah Oftentimes, it does put a land into your hand, and sometimes it doesn't do that at all. Yeah, and Scry will never put something into your hand. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's definitely better than Scry. The other option we could do is something like Malcolm, maybe, if we want to do pirate stuff. Malcolm's interesting because that will make sure that we have a way in the command zone to consistently be triggering the explore with Francisco. So if oh, you want to Francisco lean into just that, cares about pirates at total. If, if any, any pirate, pirate deals, yeah. Ooh, so that's pretty good. Turns Malcolm into 75% card advantage. Which I, I kind of like, I too. I kind of like that. Yeah. 75% of a card, not card advantage, because you're only playing like sure. 30 lands. Yeah. So the odds of you hitting a land are still very low, like two thirds or some shit like that. Yeah, I guess that's kind of true. It's 75% of a card, but it's not actually like card advantage. Right. So should we lean into that one definitely has more synergy, I feel like. The 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 two strategies that I'm thinking most about are Malcolm, you get a lot of synergy. I like yeah. synergy. Or Chrom, you just get good stuff. You just get to play with good an, stuff that deck. With and, an extra combo. And you got it. an extra combo in there. Does Grixis need an extra combo? If will you muddle up a Grixis deck by making it a worse version of Grixis so you can jam this in? That's kind of what I'm worried about. Whereas if we do Demir, 
maybe we don't have to do that. Does that make any sense or no? I think no? if we do Tamir, we're going to end up building a much more unique deck than we would if we built a Grixis deck. Because I think what we'd end up doing is just building a Grixis deck that has Final Partying, Agatha Soul Cauldron, and Walking Ballista in it. And then it's and, just Grixis Shell. And then it's just Grixis Shell. Because, That's been defined. We know yes. what that looks like. And that would be the most boring episode <laughs> that we could put together, All I right. think. So maybe let's lean towards Demir right now. We're leaning towards Malcolm. Yeah, I, I think leaning towards Malcolm is a really fun way to go here. Other options we could do is Breaches, the first Breaches. We could do a Rakdos version and Ooh, still be in that that's Pirates cool. theme. Then yeah. we just get to play Dockside in our Pirates deck. That's great. Here's the thing, though. Because we have a second Pirate in the Command Zone, I don't think we need to worry about stacking our deck full of pirates. Okay. Yeah. Because we're already yeah, going to have true. a way to consistently do it. And if we've decided that exploring is not real card advantage and it's only 75% of a card and only has a one third of a chance of drawing you a card, then we don't want to lean into that. No, it's right? not powerful enough to lean into. I'd much rather go attack with Malcolm, make a treasure and explore. Yeah. Like that seems like a much better thing to do. Malcolm is already good on its own. We know Malcolm's good. Breaches, not good. This could make Breaches better, but do you want to make your four mana creature attack be better than like the three mana one just is exactly where you want to be and yeah. it works better with jewel lotus it works better with mana crypt it's you've just, already you're saying it's cheaper right it's right. already much better and it's got a better form of evasion as well okay so we're leaning heavy right now into malcolm and into a th uh Thassa's Fran oracle demonic constitution Francisco, deck, which yeah. i'm sure a lot of people are excited to hear <laughs> yeah I'm oh, yeah. very excited about it. There'll be nuances. There'll be small things yeah, that we be, can we, change. That's not our main. It's our backup. Yeah. Thoracle Demonic Consultation is our backup. Our main win condition is final partying for Agatha Soul Cauldron and Walking Ballista. There's still a ton of other options we could do. Like we could do um uh more we could do dargo we could do a Rakdos version that dargo. dargo is a pirate and we, we could, could do a lot of sacrifice play... things with oh, dargo that's right. i didn't think it was a it was a pirate either i mean we could do tana we could play like a super fast that's definitely bad we could do tevish <laughs> which is like a mono black strategy no, get that idea out of here that's no. definitely bad tevish could be really fun that could true. be good you know but there's, there's a no... there's a black partner that's also two mana that's like a cat that would give Francisco death touch. Oh, but not a buff. We need the buff. Not a buff, yeah. The problem is that the only commander that's going to give him the buff is the Jund commander so that you can play ignoble hierarch like that's what other great, that's not a great thing to lean no, into like, what else <laughs> that's the other thing right like i want to lean into a commander that's already going to be able to attack and be able to get a francisco trigger without having to like play cards that make francisco good just because yeah like I, it might make francisco attack better if you play just malcolm you don't have to play a ton of cards to make francisco good just because malcolm works good with francisco and like we're going to be able to play like mox amber in this deck like yeah. there's other oh, yeah. cards that we're going to play to leverage francisco for being Francisco as opposed to being Armix or as opposed to being Tevish. So yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of value in non-pirate things come out of Francisco too. Also, to be honest, I see the format getting a little bit slower each and every month, right? There's more and more five, six, seven mana commanders that are out there and exist, which means that for me, I want to try to take a little step ahead of them. I want to get my commanders on board before they get their commanders on board. Totally so, agree. So that I can hold up my mana drain in time for them to play the Atraxa and the Tivin. Like, I want to get out first. For a while in CDH, I was all about, I feel like, hitting second. Right now, I feel like you want to get in there a little bit early. You want to get your, your engines down first before they get their engines down so that all of their engines can help trigger your engines and you can just be a little bit ahead of them. So I think I'm leaning very heavy towards Malcolm. All right, well then let's solidify because we've been talking about this for way too long now. Now, Lock it in. Six, Lock it 15 in. minutes into the podcast, and we've decided what deck we're building. Great. So go great. <laughs> well, I think that just shows how cool Francisco is, is that you do have yeah. so many directions and, that you can go. And I'm sure there's other options that we didn't think about that other people will come up with, but this is where our brain is going right now, so we're leaning in. Um, you have the Mox Field up? Yes, I have the Mox Field up. So I'm adding our Walking Ballista combo in here with Final Parting, because I think this is all just a, a great... Little package Great starting have. point. Let's start with let's start with the center. Let's start with the yes. combo. Let's start with what we're working towards, and then work outwards. So those are the three ones: the Agatha, the Walking Ballista, and the Tutor that finds one into hand, one into the yard. Perfect. And then we want that's the Oracle Demonic Constellation to impact. Yes. And now that's going to be the extent of our win conditions that's for the now. Core. We might put Mnemonic Betrayal in if later. We'll that's, see. Oh, we'll probably will do that. We we'll should just, just do it right now. I'm going to put Mnemonic Betrayal in because it's one of the best backup win conditions in the goddamn format. If you put Mnemonic Betrayal in, do you lean into Windfall? Do you want 
want to be playing Windfall? We'll find out because I'll only really want to be playing Windfall if I'm playing Notion Thief. Do we want to play Notion Thief? I feel like no. I, let's start with a mana production. Let's, after, start, with, let's start with <laughs> already we're overwhelmed. Can you, <laughs> can so you tell why we net deck? <laughs> There's so many things we can start with. I like the idea of starting with mana let's start because with mana. this is the stuff that's going to be obvious and we don't want to miss out on it's this. necessary. Yeah. yeah. Mana Crypt. Mana Crypt. Chrome Mox. Mox Diamond. Soul Ring. Those are going in no matter what. I like Lotus Petal. I like Lotus Petal here, right? Me too. I don't think we're going to exclude Lotus Petal. I like Mox Amber here. Lotus Petal is good because our, our first commander is just two mana, so it's yeah. a way to get it out early. Mox Amber, like I just said, our first commander is only two mana, so that Mox Amber is basically an arcane signet, I kind of think of it. It makes exactly. your commander into an arcane signet, weirdly, which is fine. That's good. Um, are, we're probably going to end up playing Ad Nauseam, I imagine, so let's get Mana Vault and, and Grim Monolith in. I would agree. I tend to like those cards in my two-color decks. Do we want to play... Um, uh, a Mox Opal. Are we, we going to lean a little bit more towards artifacts? We probably will because we're in blue-black, so I yeah. think we'll end up leaning more, especially because we are going to have a lot of ways to tutor. We're going to want to play Transmute Artifact and stuff like that. We're already playing Agatha and Walking Ballista, two combo pieces yes. that are artifacts, so we'll have other ways to search for artifacts and do artifact things. Yeah, so we'll Mox Opal's great. Make sure that we have, yeah, we'll definitely have enough for that. The One Ring. The One Ring. Gotta oh, put yeah. the One Ring in there. You know what I've been liking a lot with the One Ring is Tezzeret. Five mana Tezzeret. When you're with the One Ring, if you like the One Ring at four mana, Five mana, the one ring is still pretty good. Yeah, even though it doesn't give you protection, it's still. It doesn't give you protection, but it, it does untap your one ring if you already have one out and you want to draw a bunch of extra cards. It Honestly, does do other this stuff. is. I know we're talking about mana still, but this, and this is still really early, but. Um, I'm actually going to throw that in because that oh, also yeah. finds you Agatha Soul Cauldron as oh, well. Oh, yeah, that's great. And also, it is Tezzeret kind of is mana if you untap artifacts. Yeah, is that one the Seeker? It is the five mana one. That is mono blue. That is the seeker. Other artifacts. We're definitely doing Arcane Signet. And Jeweled Lotus. Oh, yeah. Jeweled Lotus. Big time. I definitely still like... Um, is Felwar Stone good enough? Normally, Felwar Stone is the second Signet that I put in. Talisman of Dominance would be better here, though, because we're only in two colors. I think we're actually playing both. Okay. And then maybe not Dumir Signet. Normally, I play it if I'm playing an Isochron Scepter blue-black deck, but I won't always include it in my non-Isochron Scepter blue-black decks. It depends. If we're trying to be more controlly, I might like it because I am playing it in Nimrus. Okay. How many artifacts are we at right now? We're at 15, including Agatha's Soul Cauldron. I think probably. And the one right. I think put Demir Signet in for now. And then if we have to shave a card later, maybe it's Demir Signet. Yeah, I think that's fair. Do we want something like, what kind of stacks pieces are we looking at? Do we like Cursed Totem here? No, because our commanders, no, our, that, whole our, our whole thing is, is activated, activated abilities. abilities. So that means yeah. we can't do. Um, like a Stony Silence, obviously, because we're just talking about all these. Not Stony Silence. What the? Um, yeah, Stony. Uh, um, no Rod. Yeah, we don't want No, no Rod. Can't do either. No Rod. Yeah. What about Graft Digger's Cage? Does Graft Digger's Cage stop artifacts from coming into play from library? We have a couple. Well, we're not. We're not moving. We're moving it from uh, the graveyard to exile, which I think is fine. Is that right? I mean, just like the the artifact tutors that find like uh, like a Tezzeret that can find an artifact from your graveyard. Does Grafdigger's Cage stop that? I can't remember if it stops artifacts or just creatures from entering the library Let from me library. See here, creatures can't enter the battlefield from graveyards or libraries. So artifacts can enter the battlefield from libraries. Yes, artifacts okay. can enter the battlefield from libraries. Players can't cast cards in graveyards or libraries, which we're not doing. We should play Grafdigger's Cage. We should play Grafdigger's Cage. Shuts yeah. off Underworld Breach. Shuts off all the green tutors. I love Grafdigger's Cage. One my Never. favorite reasons to be in blue black really yeah yep okay cool cool let's move on to some tutors because tutors. these are very important in tomb is the first one that i go to because we we were sending something to the graveyard with that walking ballista i like that idea then demonic tutor imperial seal vampiric tutor those are three auto includes for me imperial seal is a little bit I'm losing a little bit of love for Imperial Seal, but it's still a very good, I think, worth including. Yeah, I think me too, but I like that we can explore and yeah, get value off explore. that, I oh, guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can you can Imp Seal for a land and then explore it into your hand immediately. Boom. I love that. That seems wonderful. Do we want Beseech the Mirror? We're making treasure tokens with Malcolm that can sacrifice. We want to find uh, a card, a permanent, and put it right into play. I yeah. feel like Beseech is good. I like it, too. We want a Mystical Tutor to find the Beseech, of course. 
Yeah, I think Mystical Tutor will be good to hear to have here too. I think the top tech tutors in general, we want to play as many as we can too, because we want to make sure that we have a non land on top of our library for when we go through our Ma our Francisco combo. We don't want personal tutor though. Yeah, I think that's bad enough that yeah, we don't. Want we don't pers want personal tutor. I think most of the time, if we don't have a top deck tutor to guarantee what's on top of our library, you know, we should play Sensei's top. Ooh, okay. Ooh, you know where I'm seeing this going. If we're playing Sensei's top and we're probably playing Transmute Artifact, write that one down. That's that's yeah, that's uh, that's another tutor that we're playing. It seems like we have some artifact stuff. Should we do Bolas to Citadel here? Obviously, we're going to do Bolas We should do Bolas to Citadel. Citadel. Fuck yeah. I, I don't think we need to do um, Ad Nauseam for that reason then, because we're doing Bolas to Citadel instead. We so could do both, though. We, just wanna, like, we, we could do both, but Ad now we're also so playing, we're playing five mana Tezzeret. We're playing Beseech the Mirror. Like, this is going to be a much better Bolas to Citadel deck instead of an Ad Nauseam deck. Like, that's going to put us at way too much. Final Parting's another five mana mm, spell that okay. we're also playing. So I okay. think our curve is going to be a little too expensive for Ad Nauseam, but we can lean into other things, too. What about Peer into the Abyss, then? I do like Peer into the Abyss. Maybe I want to see what the deck looks like before I put in more mass draw and okay. see if it can like we'll wait on that. win off of more mass draw instead. What about other tutors? Any other tutors? Should we do um what's the um the two mana blue blue counter and instant or sorcery can transmute? You know, I do like muddle the mixture. Muddle the mixture. Because Agatha Soul Cauldron is a two mana artifact. This seems great. Let's put so it in. So I do think that that is something that is nice to have too. Um, so that puts us at a pretty good number of tutors so far. Last one I'm thinking about, just because we're in Demir, Limdul's Vault. Old classic, we haven't touched it in a while. Do we like it here? We're playing Bolas to Citadel. We want to look. We want to make sure the top of our library is something specific Honestly, sometimes yeah, for that's, Francisco. That's actually a really good point. You know what? I think actually Diabolic Intense okay too. Yep. We're playing a cheap commander. I like that idea also. Yeah, I think our two mana commander is going to make this okay. So, all right. I, I actually really like how many. What about oh, the Limdu's Vault? We're we doing it or no? I, I put it in. Yeah, Limdu's Vault, I put it in because I, I think it has a lot more utility in this deck than it does most other decks. How do we feel about Reshape as like another? Reshape. Ooh, uh, I normally end up cutting Reshape, but great. I'm not going to put it in yet, but we're going to keep that on the back burner for yeah. like just in case we need an extra tutor we feel like we need I can an see extra it's just a little bit too much right what's the what's the cost again it's the same cost as transmute artifact but you have to pay the full mana yeah. right there's yeah yeah it's the full amount for whatever you go find instead of making up the mana so is it would it be four total mana to find agatha maybe in this deck that's okay maybe four mana to find that or just two mana to find the walking ballista that's great you know that's true two mana put walking Goes ballista right in the into your graveyard yeah. is also a okay. nice really i like it good here. spot to be in that's okay. great we'll do it that's a demonic tutor right it there. is Pop two it mana and sacrifice another artifact but we're at 19 artifacts so far and our commander makes treasures malcolm makes treasures oh my god malcolm makes yeah, treasures so that's, we're, we're extra good here you know what and that's the same mana cost as walking ballista as yeah. well too yeah. so that actually that's great so it's just another redundancy yeah. piece yeah oh that's, that's awesome so here. cool oh i love this so okay, far this oh is this perfect. is so cool okay <laughs> i put in Ristic study and mystic remora oh, as well yeah, those are, are there any other long-term card advantage pieces yes. that you put in so let's think about um i normally go to do we want fairy mastermind fairy mastermind is one that i normally go to even though we're in a bowmaster world which also please put bowmaster in quickly i still like fairy mastermind when they don't have a bowmaster and you do have a bowmaster um fairy mastermind can just just work well with a lot of the other draw effects. Um, what about Ledger Shredder? I haven't been using that one as much lately. I think we're going to hold on Ledger Shredder for right now because holding, yeah. we're not playing Yawgmoth's Will quite yet. Graft Digger's Cage is the reason why we're not playing Yawgmoth's Will yet, which means I'm not sure about Windfall anymore either right now. And the size in Ledger Shredder for CDH is just not going to matter. It's just not going to come up. Maybe you'll get to hit a, a couple extra, but I just don't think it's relevant. I, I like it more than Mastermind in red decks and like Underworld Breach decks, but we're not in that. So I think I'm okay with Mastermind here. Dark Confidant is way too outclass. We're not even there. No, we're, we're not, not even there. Do, I did put even... Oppo and Dothy in already too, oh, yeah, so definitely. I squeeze them in. What else? What else? What Do other we want like Phantasmal Image? Like that's another blue creature that I like adding. We like like a Dockside Extortionist on we the do, other side of the yeah. field. Yeah, I think Phantasmal Image is good. i really been thinking about Phyrexian Metamorph a lot recently, especially because we are in the One Rings world and having an extra one to copy somebody else's or to copy your own and Legend rule out the one that's about to kill you is a really good spot to be. Oh, I like that too. You know what? I'm putting Metamorph in and not 
the any other clones for right now. Not Phantasm Image. Do we need two clones? How many clones do we want? There's a lot of good cards in the format, and we're playing two colors only. What do we want of ours? Uh, we have a decent amount of creatures that we could copy. You know what? If we could copy other people's pirates, too, I think that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So maybe, okay. All right, I'll put a second clone in for now. What about, we're not doing Shieldred, right? Are we? I think we can hold off on Shieldred. I've for thought now. about it for. I've, I'm playing it in, in Blood Pod right now, but I don't think that's where we want to be in this deck. Are there any other good creatures that draw cards we should be considering? Like Talion? Should we be considering mm, Talion? Maybe. I think people are starting to consider Talion a lot more. Which, As like a main deck card advantage yeah. engine. I like it more as a commander than a piece in the deck. Four mana just feels like a lot for an engine, but. Maybe. Um, yeah, put it in. Put it in for now. We're not playing Notion Thief. I don't think it's an Ocean Thief deck. I don't think it's a Shieldred deck. I think we do need some type of beefy threat, um, even though this one doesn't really clock them for anything. It's just more advantage. But yeah. it, the two damage adds up. I think so, right? too. Okay, yeah, Italian. I'm, I'm in on Italian. Um, interaction. Should we start on Let's interaction? Let's start with interaction, I yeah. feel like we're getting there. We need the Force of Will. We need Force of Will. We need Force of Negation. We need Fierce Guardianship. And I definitely think since we're not playing Ad Nauseam, we can also play... Deadly Rollick? Deadly Rollick is a great one here. Especially since we don't have Swords to Plowshare or Efficient Removal, really. I mean, we do have Rapid Hybridization. Is that good enough in Demir? Do we want just Destroyed Creature for one mana? Is that good? I would prefer playing, uh, like, Dismember instead, Ooh, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I love Dismember, so you don't have to convince me for that. Because that way we can just get the creature clean off the board. We're not playing Ad Nauz, so I'm less concerned about my life total. Chain of Vapor? Chain of Vapor is good. I also put in Mental Misstep as well. Oh, yeah. We should more, some more counter spells. Do we yeah. have any more freebies? We're not playing Days. I don't think we're going a little bit too long for Days. No, I don't think we are either, but I am going to put an offer you can't refuse swan song in like the main counter spells that we're gonna play all the time i still like yeah. flusterstorm always i still love it yeah how do you feel about dispel i like dispel a lot but it's i see it getting cut from time to time i've been cutting dispel cutting from time dispel. to time now it's no longer an instant yeah. for me the more that the fast ad nauseum decks are no longer in the format i want it less okay we'll hold on it for now but i still don't mind having another one mana counter spell in here though um we definitely want mana drain oh yeah we want mana drain do we want delay probably we yeah want delay. i yeah. think i'm totally okay having two uh two to three two mana hard counters for something i'm gonna put pact of negation in too oh pact i honestly have been a little bit less unpacked because we're not really like i guess we do have the one card win so having extra ways to stop it uh, Sometimes packed, I, it feels bad if you end up having to pay for it to keep going to stop somebody else. That doesn't feel good. Yeah, that is true. Another card I was thinking about real quick beside we can we'll include pack for now because it's just a great card. But um Shieldred's Edict. I don't think that's what it's called, but it's uh two mana. You know the card that I'm talking about. Uh, that is actually the name of it. Is the that card. what it's called? Yeah. That's so funny. I'm gonna throw it in. That's a card that I play in Nimrus, and it's I've had it in my hand. When that's once. a three for one, you're like, wow, this kills three things that I want to kill. Like its ceiling is so crazy. I've only had it in my hand once and okay, it was killed a Lanawar elf. Oh, so that sucks. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it wasn't great there, but I, I do think I think this card is better than that one scenario that I just mentioned here. So I think I'm okay putting that in. Did I say mind break trap? Because I put mind break trap in here too. That one, yeah, that one's definitely. Do we want? We don't want uh, misdirection. Do we want misdirection? I don't think we want misdirection. I like it in Nimrus because it's another thing that triggers Nimrus, but I don't have a way to do that in this deck, so I don't think we want it. I've been thinking about subtlety. Should I not be thinking about subtlety? Get subtlety. that idea out of here. That's, That's no a terrible good. idea. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I fucking hate subtlety. Okay, much better in other formats, I think. It's just not. It's you not good still give it. them the card, don't yeah. you? Well, yeah, you kind of time top. walk them though. That you puts it on top of the library, so I have to draw it again, which in one v one can oh, be kind of backbreaking. No, I have to but... draw my dioxide extortionist <laughs> again. That's yeah. the the last card no. that I wanted. Oh, yeah. The card right. that's going to win me the game is the last thing I wanted. Okay. All right. Is there any other counter spells or interaction that we're forgetting? Do we want um, any mass removal? Toxic Deluge? Do we want Toxic? Oh, yes. Um, I feel like well, we don't have a lot of creatures. Question. We have nine creatures, but our, our commanders are cheap as shit. Yeah, I still think we want the option of Toxic, right? What about a Wrath that doesn't hit Pirates? Does that card exist? Is that a three mana minus? Is it minus two though? It has to kill Dranith Magistrate. No, it is a minus three, minus Ooh. three. Is it four mana though? How much mana is it? Is it three mana? If it's three mana, I say yes. Which is Vengeance. Oh. One black, black creatures of the creature type of your choice get minus three, minus three. This is the opposite. This of is the what opposite of no. what we want. This is not okay, what we want. Okay, so the, the effect I'm thinking of is actually a four mana wrath that does minus three, minus three to everything that's not the 
the, of the creature type of your choice. What's that card called? I, dude. <laughs> I don't fucking know. It's on screen now. But I think now that we're getting into a four mana realm, I think that's going to be a little bit too much. I think I'd rather just play Toxic Deluge now. There's going to be situations where you have a Malcolm in your hand, you don't want to kill, and you're staring at Toxic Deluge, and you go, that stinks. But there's going to be other situations where there's a Dranith Magistrate and a Collector Oof, and you're going to be like, oh my god, this is the best card ever. Cyclonic Rift we're going to throw in right now. That's also oh, yeah. going to help solve this problem, too. Do we want Snap? Do we want to untap our lands? We're not playing Guy's Cradle. We're not playing any other way to abuse it. Maybe there will be another bounce spell we'd want to play like march of swirling mist i'd rather march, play that's kind march. of a bounce spell yeah i like that more than unsubstantiate i haven't been using that one much recently i like Me march neither. a lot i don't like a unsub that much but i'd much rather play march of swirling mists yes that one march of phasing creatures out yes that one is definitely included uh any other creature removal any other bounce any other destruction what are we looking at do we want to play honestly dude we're at 66 cards we're running out of space Ooh, how many how that, we, we got to play 30 lands we got to put some yeah we should definitely play 30 lands we're a little bit of a chunk here should we dump the lands in real quick and then see what our last few slots look like yeah all right so we definitely want to play this is a tainted pack mana base we got to keep that in mind so we, we're going to play underground sea should I go in one at a time with these lands that we're playing, or should I just hit the? This is going to be boring. Button? Yeah, let, we're going to fast. No one's going to care. Let's just we're adding in the Add good expensive ones. Expensive sample mana base. Yeah. Thank you very <laughs> much. We're going to shave it a little bit. All the fetch lands, a couple of the five color lands. Okay, hold up, hold up. All right, so we are playing Bloodstained Mire. We are playing City of Brass, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Flooded Strand, Mana Confluence, Marsh Flats, Misty Rainforest, Polluted Delta, Prisma uh, Prismatic Vista. We haven't said Brainstorm yet. I don't love an extra fetch for no reason in an opposition agent world. They are great at fixing your mana, yes, but they're good because they find underground sea, not because they find swamp. Then uh, I'll cut that. Scalding Tarn, underground sea, Vernon Catacombs, and Watery Grave is what we have so far. Did you say ancient tomb? No. Get it in there. So, yeah, so ancient tomb's going to get in here. And then how many total lands do we have right now? That brings us to 14, but we don't have gemstone caverns. So we have to play gemstone caverns. Uh, we have to play an island. You got to get a swamp in there. I don't think we have to go to Snows yet, but we might do that. Honestly, I tend to run out of room, uh, but we'll hold off on that. Let's do Ottawara. Yep. Oh, yeah. Do, do we you... even want to do Takanam? What is it? Takanuma? Takanuma. We should Honestly, do it. Honestly, it's something else that you can do with your mana. It mills. It mills. You can be super big brain and vampiric tutor your walking ballista to the top and then mill it over and draw something else. If you really need... No, you would just draw a walking ballista and cast it back. That's what I'm saying. So you draw something else. So you can draw a good card and mill over the walking ballista. Oh, oh I, yeah. I, I, you're, you're, it's, I, no, you're right. That is big... I didn't think <laughs> just, about that. That is big brain, yeah. But yeah, we'll include it. I feel like it's free enough in a two-color deck. Yeah, we're going to play Urza Saga. It doesn't get Agatha's Soul Cauldron, but... It doesn't get walking ballista either because it has to be exactly zero or one, but it does get like Soul Ring or uh, Graph Digger's Cage, which is... Good enough for me. Or Sensei's Top, right? Sure. Like, there's just a bunch yeah, of Sensei's good top. little things it can get. Other two color lands. What's the um the battle the battle one? Oh my God, Morphic Pool. Morphic Pool. Uh, and then the the ping the damage one. The underground river. Underground river. That's the pain land. Pain is the term for it. So I have a couple of ones that I'm thinking of now. What do you think about the fast land, Dark Slick Shores? I think it's fine in two color. I think I'll consider it in a quick two color deck, which this is. We want to play our commanders early. We want the mana early. I think it's fine. Yeah, I, I kind of I've been up on fast lands in general in my two and even three color decks sometimes. Yeah, even especially in decks that play thirty lands because they want to and could get away with twenty eight, but want that extra land. I feel like that's okay. Yeah, to play definitely agree. This right? Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. It's kind of just a gut feeling, but we don't have a horizon canopy style land. In no, Blue we Black, don't, which is very frustrating. Uh. Yeah. Finish <laughs> that cycle wizards. Um, what do we think about the pathway? I do not like the pathways. I don't, but we're I love at them in casual. Three. We still need seven more. We're, oh my God. Any other five color lands? You got the command tower in there. I got the command tower in here. And yeah. You got the ancient. Do you want other two double lands? Do you want other soul lands like city of traders? We could play city of traders. I guess city wow. of traders is produces two mana for Agatha or walking. You don't need for walking Busta, but for the Agatha, it can cast the Agatha. That's nice. One, one land does that. That's true. I tend to like that card more in faster decks, but we're not like that fast. We're a little fast. Pretty quick. I'll put it in. Lots of tutors. Uh, one card win condition. Multiple Helps assistant you lines. get Malcolm out pretty quick too. Yeah. So yeah. I can see an argument for it. All right, I'll put City of Traders in. Do we want the other one? There's one that just sacrifices right away for two mana. Chris, That's I too think far. Crystal Vein, I don't think we not need. Good yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I'm thinking about the Snow Color basics. Yeah, throw them in there. It looks like we're stretching. What about Mishra's Workshop? 
Is that what it is? I don't think we need shops. Yeah, it's not good. Um, although I'll tell you this though, I'm gonna put Manamo in here. Dun, 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 dun. Cause any deck that is just looking for more lands to fill up its land slots and plays the one ring, yeah. should just play it. What about Phyrexian Tower? We have a cheap commander that we might want to ditch later. Oh, that's a tough one. Hmm. Because we only run nine other creatures That's right lot. now. That's, That's really not a, not a lot. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, I think it's going to end up mostly being a colorless land a lot of the time. Okay, what other lands are there? Jesus Christ. We what? only need three more. What other lands do people play? Oh, God. I don't know. Should I cheat? Should I look and see oh, what no, other lands no, we're doing play? All, we're doing all of this from brain, first take. No, I, we haven't looked at any external sources besides Scryfall to see a card, right? But just to read what cards do okay, is the yeah. only thing that we've looked at external sources for. What's the one that gives a legendary creature... Um, like fear or something, because you have a Malcolm that you want to. Shinzo. Shinzo. Shin, sh sh yeah, Shinzo. Shinzo. Shinzo is somebody's Zampakto and Bleach. It's Gin Ichimaru Zampakto Shinzo. Shizo. 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 How do you spell it? S H I Z O. So a legendary creature gains fear until end of turn. I swear I typed that in and it didn't come up. Death Storehouse, right? Yeah, Death Storehouse. What about surprise and scary? The um, the the lands that come in with the depletion counters, the tap lands, you get to tap them two times for the colored mana of their choice. Is that good? Uh, no, no, that's not good. No, right? uh, no we're not fine in mono color decks, I would say, but I don't like them, don't here. them here. What about River of Tears? I like River of Tears. Oh, 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 um. Spire, Spire? Ooh, is a great Spire of Industry deck. Spire of Industry, there we go. Is that 30? That's got to be 30. That is 30. That Fuck hits yeah. 30 right. Right How many there? total yeah. cards do we have? We have 96 cards. 96, wow. So we have two freebies, right? Or is that with the commander? We have four cards. We have four cards, okay. Have four cards to put in. 96 totals, including our commander. Wow, how do we get to this point? We have four free slots. Let's go over everything just to make sure that like we're not missing anything that's like super obvious. Okay. So we have a bunch of great creatures here all the good creatures i would say uh interaction i don't even know how to begin going over this well just read them off to me start from the creatures all right let's re let's reread every single card in the deck all 96 cards should i just you want me to just look at it instead yeah why don't you take a quick look and we'll just th i think at this point like some of the stuff that we we weren't sure if we wanted to add we can start adding like maybe if there's just extra removal we want to add we can do that do you see what I mean now, when I always say I am struggling to find the last cards. I think we should. Honestly, we need more cheap interaction. We need, we need ways to stay alive to yeah. the mid game. Do you think we need more on the board interaction? And early protection. Or I think maybe a mix of both. I'm thinking about right now Spell Pierce and Miscast. Great. Okay. And then I'm also thinking that we should do Pongify. Pognify. Pognify? You really like th this type of card. I don't really like it, but we're looking for slots, and I think the creatures are really prevalent. It's rough that there's like no, there's no better option in black that we want. I guess there, I guess it's fine. Yeah, because it gets rid of any creature. Yeah, we could do another bounce spell. We could do snap back or snap. We really have a lot of ways to get that card advantage back. I think Pognify is good. Yeah, I think Pognify is. I think we're kind of looking for here. Ooh, do we have any more slots? Or is that it? We have one more slot. The Snapcaster Mage. Let's put Snapcaster Mage in here. Honestly, I've been thinking about Snapcaster Mage for um, Nimrus. I feel like, how have I not done that? Yeah. Do you know why we don't do that? Because we play Grafter's Cage. Ah, fuck. All right, fine, fine. Do we want anything else that works well with our combo? Any other... Are there other Entomb effects? Um, is there the one that gets a non-legendary for two mana? The Sorcery? Oh. That seems pretty good. Unmarked Grave. Unmarked Grave. That one's neat. Okay, so we have 100 cards, but now I have a question. Yeah, what's that, Cam? This should be a Hordling Broodlord deck. Uh-oh, we're already playing Entomb. We're already playing Entomb this. We could throw in Reanimate. But then you have to all you have to be in pure deck. We're not playing Dark Ritual. We're not playing anything to go fast like that. How? Whoa, we missed Dark Ritual? Do you think we should play Dark Ritual? We should still be playing Dark Ritual. Okay, let's cut one of those. Either Spell Pierce or Miscast. I'm going to cut Miscast. Okay. Just because it doesn't hit as many things. Great. Yeah, that's fine. So we don't want to be a Hordeen Broodlord deck because we have uh, so many so. of these pieces. We just need to add five more cards and cut five things. Our win conditions are already compact. I feel like we need to maximize on good cards because we're in two colors, so we can't waste more slots on win conditions. What we if have I enough. told you that exploring helps you put things into your graveyard? 
because if you find the Hoarding Broodlord, like you can you can tutor it to the top of your library with Imperial Seal and then Francisco it into your graveyard. I do love Hoarding Broodlord, but I like Hoarding Broodlord when it's the second option. Maybe if Francisco didn't have a combo that went along with him, it would be something to consider, but... I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of tough because we're not on peer. This deck wasn't designed to be a peer deck. No, would... like I kind of want to look at what like an opening hand looks like to figure out... If we made a terrible deck? We have 100 cards. Let's do some test hands. All right, what's this first one you got? This is Urza Saga, Mana Confluence, Felwar Stone, Transmute Artifact, Delay, Fairy Mastermind, and My Break Trap. That doesn't seem very great. This seems bad. Let's go to second seven. Yeah, let's do a second seven. So second seven is Mox Diamond, River of Tears, Misty Rainforest, Lotus Petal, City of Brass, The One Ring, Toxic Deluge. This hand's awesome. This hand's amazing. Do you it's... do turn one Malcolm with the Lotus Petal and the Mox Diamond? No, I would do turn one Francisco so I can do turn two The One Ring. Ring. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty turn, good. And then go, just go, and then do Malcolm Fuck later Malcolm. on. Malcolm, yeah, yeah, I have a well, one ring, motherfucker. If you do Malcolm, turn one, uh, and then turn two. If you hit the second land drop, which you would, you'll have a you'll have enough with the Malcolm treasure to still cast the one ring. So if you go land Mox Diamond, pitch a land Lotus Petal, crack the Lotus Petal for Malcolm. You have the second land, so on your second turn, you'll have land land. Mox Diamond, attack with the Malcolm, make the fourth treasure um, with the one ring, and then you have your uh, card advantage and your mana advantage out by turn two. Yeah, I forgot for a second that Malcolm does make treasures. It makes treasure. So this hand's actually great. This hand's awesome. With this second seven, great. snap, keep it. Let's go to, uh, let's do another one. So this one then is Scalding Tarn, Shinzo, Exotic Orchard, Manamo, Demonic Consultation, Orcish Bowmaster, and Opposition Agent. It's a trap. There's a big trap. Yeah, immediate ship. Good cards, but there's just nothing to do quick enough. Misty Rainforest, Grafdigger's Cage, Dark Ritual, Besiege the Mirror, Swan Song, Spell Pierce, Talion. Interesting. I think this is also a ship. Yeah, this is close. A, this is a, if we don't draw another mana source, we're yeah. screwed. And we need more than one mana source to stay afloat this game. And you're not likely to do that, right? If you have a third of your deck as lands. No, and what do you do? You turn one... Francisco Grafdigger's Cage and then you lose the game. I would turn one just Grafdigger's Cage and then hope to turn two Dark Ritual into Talion to draw myself out of it further, but you have to hit land and win the first two. You don't have the first one. Well, we would have fetched with a Misty, but either way, this one's, yeah, I agree. Let's go to six. Six is Bloodstained Mire, Urza Saga, Mox Diamond, Vampiric Tutor, Mystical Tutor, Muddle the Mixture, and Force of Will. I think this it's hand's very interesting. Yeah, These blue-black decks that have Mox Diamond hands and two lands really take a risk when they don't have a card advantage engine yeah. to get out really early because these blue-black decks are mana-hungry sometimes. I think I would still keep this one. I would probably pitch the Mystical Tutor, and I think I'm going land Mox Diamond, pitch the Urza's Tower, I think, just because we're going to be strapped for mana, I think, and I don't want to— Highly wanna, agree. Right? Like, I just I don't want to lose that Urza Saga too quickly, so we'll get rid of that. Oh, no, other way, you don't want to lose the— Sorry, I don't want to—I don't want to lose the—I don't want to—I don't want to lose the Urza's Tower. Yeah, like I don't want to deal with it getting lost. So I want to. I want to get rid of it to the Mox Diamond. I see what you mean. I, that now, is kind yes. of confusing. I meant I don't want to sacrifice it in three turns. I want to just get rid of it now to the Mox Diamonds. We have the two sources. Turn one, Francisco, and then I think turn two on your upkeep. You tap for Vampire Tutor to find Jewel Lotus for Malcolm, or you could just find like fish and then cast fish yeah. immediately. Depending too. on what the board looks like, I think that's what my game plan is: is Vampire Tutor for Engine on turn two, and then hold up. Your counter spells after that. But this is a keep. This yeah. is a keep. Do you want to do one more? And then that way we'll have three games. Whoa. I see a mana crypt for keeping yeah, it. Yeah, geez. Mana crypt, underworld C. What? <laughs> Almost. Mana crypt, underground C, Takanuma, Chrome Mox, Children's Edict, Deadly Rollick, and Transmute Artifact. This is a great Mana Crypt deck. Oh, this is such a good Mana Crypt awesome. deck. I yeah. think you uh, see Underground C Mana Crypt into Malcolm, right? Yep. You just do that. Uh, you hold, you have your uh, your removal spell that you can have, which probably means that you pitch Chrome Mox. I don't think you, I don't think you play the Chrome Mox just yet. I wouldn't. I guess this is now the ever eternal struggle of what? when do you play Mana Rocks if you need them or before you need them. I think in this situation you don't play just because you have three other good cards you don't want to get rid of and you can't do anything with the mana when you play oh, it. See, to me, Shieldred's Edict is like the clear card in this hand that I'm okay getting rid of. I think most other cards that I draw, I'm going to rather want to have because I already have Deadly Rollick as a removal spell. Shieldred's Edict is 
just value. What does Chromox turn one do for you though? Not if like you feed could, a fish, but like if there's a fish in play, I'm not gonna do it. But like like if you could hold up a counter spell with that mana from the Chromox, I would say yes. But if you can't do anything with that mana right now, and you like I don't I don't want to get rid of a card. I, I feel like I guess I can bluff something else. Mm, yeah, maybe. I, w I wouldn't play it. I, I would don't think Shieldred's Edict is good enough for me to care. Ooh, maybe we should cut the card from the deck. <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah, but like... It depends on the matchup, maybe. In some matchups, it'll be awesome, but I see what you're saying. Either way, this is definitely a keep, no matter what you do. Yeah, I think this is definitely a keep. What should we name the deck? Oh, yeah, we gotta find a name for the deck. We should let YouTube commenters name the deck. Yeah, name the deck. Whichever and, uh... deck gets the most upvotes, we'll name it that. Whichever comment gets the most upvotes. Yeah, what did I say? I think deck... Yeah, I meant comments. Whichever comment gets the most upvotes. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Devlin, Mark Cirillo, Alan but in lowercase, Zachary Nelson, she doesn't even go here, Joey Aaron, SoCal Acura, Stormageddon, Luke Cook, AJ Awosabi, Kylock, Demon of Rosbreeze, Kawaja A. Hamid, Uncle Butts, Lauren Connell, and Baby Jeebus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Big thank you to Dragon Shield for supporting the show. Make sure you use our affiliate link down below and code playtowin5 to get 5% off your order. You can follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram for more content. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Tyler Heckenliable, Mobcraft, Focus Lamia, Javaha, Dalton Poteet, Kadanis, Lutri's dad, Mitchell Shepard, Justin Mansolo, Pedro, Jacob Depp, Michael Ballou, Jan Wildfang, Thomas Bueno, and David Nelson. Or listening. <laughs> <laughs>、Welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs>